is Tariq Talk. Your host, Tariq Mendez, takes you on a journey with guests from all around the world. Broadcasting around the world. Around the world. This is Tariq Talk. All right, guys. Hello. Today, I'm a minute contemporary with Heidi Kirkably. At, did I get that right, Heidi? Yes, almost. <laughs> yeah, almost. Sorry. Would you mind telling us the correct way to pronounce my apologies? Well, in English, I suppose we could say Heidi Kirkaby. Kirkaby, yeah. It's a beautiful name. I love that name. Um, and we are at the ASCAF residency program. Thank you so much for being here today with me. I really appreciate it. I know you have the opening reception coming up, so thank you for making the time to meet with me. I'm very grateful. Um, right now we're in her studio, and I can't wait for you guys to see with all the videos and pictures I'm going to take and share. It's beautiful, especially her shoes. I love how her shoes has paint splashes on it. Very, very cool. I splash away. Yes. No, I love that. I love, like, the small details. Um, do you want to start by telling us a little bit about yourself, please? Mm -hmm. an amazing one at that I must say it's beautiful work because you know I saw your work and on pictures and videos but it never does the justice and I love the energy it's so like fluid and free and it really captures the viewer like it sucks you in almost and like it takes you like you know it feels like I'm in a dream I don't know how to describe like I'm you know like the piece I I've, I feel a lot of peace when I fly mm -hmm. and seeing your paintings give me like that tranquility that the relaxation, you know what I mean, like that deep breath. So I it's really that, beautiful. Yeah, that's something I really tried to make. I yeah. tried to, to paint atmospheres. Uh -huh. Oh, okay. There are nature abstractions, but the atmospheres are the most uh, important things to me. And then you can feel different kinds of atmospheres when you see the paintings. Beautiful. I love I that. I feel them, and the, the viewer will see uh, different uh -huh. things depending on, wha on what their experience. And do you like hearing like feedback on your work? Like do you, is that something you like or you kind of avoid? Because a lot of artists like, they don't want to hear anything and they also don't like constructive criticism. But some people love, you know, what the viewer and the experience that they have with the art. Are you like, is that something you look forward to? Like hearing what people see and what they feel like when seeing your artwork? Yes, I like people uh, yeah. telling me what they see. And you know, to be a better painting painter, you always need to to hear the negative things as well. Yes, and that's maybe true. <laughs> try to do better yes. the next time. So yes. it's better that people say what they really think, and then you can appreciate it when they say something positive as well, if you know they are telling mm -hmm. what they really feel. Absolutely. And what's your creative process like? Well, um, if you think about my inspiration, is that what you're thinking yeah. about? Yes. Well, obviously, it's the, the nature that's the most inspiring thing for mm -hmm. me. So uh, I um, do a lot of photos and uh, I get inspiration from wherever I am. Oh, wow. And okay. also from other artists and uh, from going to museums yeah. and galleries. And so that and was actually, oh, sorry. Well, I uh, I'm really um, uh, focused on the colors. Mm -hmm. They are very important to me. So I start by blending the colors to try to make some decisions of what I'm going to make. But uh, after that, the process is really free. I try to do the paintings in an intuitive way, mm -hmm. to just let it flow and not think too much. Mm -hmm. And uh, when it comes to a point, I have to start thinking yeah. <laughs> and no, to find out what to keep and what to paint over. So it results in many layers of yeah. painting. I definitely get the vibe. Like, as I said, like, it's very peaceful. It also reminds me of like people's auras, you know, like the energy around their body. That's the vibe I get. Mm -hmm. And you mentioned like taking pictures. So when you're in nature, are you like taking pictures of everything and then coming into the studio and painting that? I do the pictures, but I don't paint exac exactly what I have okay. been photographing, but it's a kind of photo to remember what I saw, mm -hmm. and I never paint the same. 
aspect. Yeah. It's a kind of uh, inspiration in colors and composition, and mm-hmm. then it turns out to be something completely else. Got it. And do you find yourself like always thinking, or are you able to like be in the moment and enjoy like being in nature and going to museums, or is your mind like always thinking about like the next piece of art you're going to make? Well, I am in the moment, but in some place in back of the mind, I mm-hmm. always try to. <laughs> Are you Start able to like balance both? Because yeah. I'm always thinking like I wish I could like step back and relax. I'm always like thinking the next art, the next piece that I want to do. Like, are you able to like separate that and be like, okay, this is I'm going to relax and enjoy this, and then when I'm in the studio, I'll create. Yeah, well, I think I can uh, relax in the nature and uh, and to paint uh, nature abstractions is also a way to uh, highlight the value of nature in, in today's hectic society mm-hmm. because I think we need that calm and uh, uh, that we can feel when we are out in the nature. Mm-hmm. And I have to say, you have such good energy. <laughs> I was just uh, stuck in traffic and I was like, oh my God, I don't want to be late to our interview. And just like your paintings, like, as soon as I got here, very peaceful, very relaxed. And I was like, okay, let me calm down, let me chill, let me relax, you know. So I love it, like, because, you know, a lot of times, sometimes the art doesn't really, like, you can't really connect the artist and the art because they're so different, you know what I mean? But you are so much like your artist, so peaceful, chill, relaxing, and inviting. So thank you again for having me in your beautiful space. Thank you. Um, and then, are you an artist that likes to create in the morning or at nighttime? Like, do you have a preference or whenever inspiration comes to well, you? Well, I, I usually paint uh, in daytime mm-hmm. while... Others go to work, so mm-hmm. then I can be with family and friends oh, okay, in the cool. evening. So I'm not that kind of artist, painting all uh-huh. night and uh, sleeping in the day. I, I have regular yeah, regular hours. life. Yeah, yes, yeah, I like that. Oh, that's amazing balance. And are you um, like when you get stuck and let's say like you're you don't have any good ideas in the moment? Mm-hmm. How are you able to like go like like go through that and kind of get inspired again to start creating? painting is very frustrating from Mm -hmm. uh, times to times because sometimes you don't manage to do what you want but I have a creative diary where I uh, write things, I paint colors, Mm -hmm. I cut out things I put in there so when I need some new ideas I go back and look in my diary to find things and maybe I find something that can be used that I have collected years ago. Yeah. And also, I just have to start. Yeah. Just have to blend some colors and yeah. then start, and then it it happens. Do you have like um, do you have like a, a big archive that sometimes you go back to get inspired and redo things? Well, as I told you, I have this uh, creative diary that I mm. use. And I also sometimes paint over my old paintings. Oh, you do? Yeah, <laughs> because I, I, am, I don't like them that much any longer. Yeah. And I think I can see something new I can do with them. And then there are new layers and layers <laughs> over that again. Oh, wow. So they become something new. <laughs> I like that because I've interviewed previous artists where they tell me, including myself, like if I paint something I don't like it, I just throw it out, you know? But... But how does that work for you, like, when you're creating and it's not the way you planned it to be? Do you put it to the side or do you, like, start new or you kind of push yourself to finish that? Well, very often they turn out not to be what I anticipated. Mm-hmm. And sometimes I am surprised what I have made uh-huh. <laughs> because I didn't think it would be like that. Yeah. But sometimes that turns out good and other times it doesn't so yeah. then when I am um, feel a little stuck I have to put it aside and and I can go watching it for for many weeks before I know what to do oh wow that's very nice and you mentioned you go to museums is that something that you do a lot like going to galleries and going to museums for fun uh, yes I do that a lot mm-hmm. and, and now especially when I'm here in New Jersey and New mm-hmm. York I I've decided to study the art of Helen Frankenthaler. Oh wow! So I have been to um, museums, mm-hmm. and I have also been to the Frankenthaler Foundation. Oh wow! So I've seen a lot of her art, mm-hmm. and I have read about her, and I used the inspiration from her art uh, during this residency to make my yeah own paintings. Uh-huh. 
And you mentioned your creative journal, like your creative diary. Do you keep that with you as you walk? Like you go to museums and like live your life and write down ideas? Or it's just like, it's like in the studio for you? No, it's, it's in the studio. It's in the studio. It's, uh, <laughs> I have a big book. It's too, too big to, to, to carry, carry around. <laughs> <laughs> I could imagine. I find my only small one uh, oh, here. <laughs> I see that. And do you keep like all of them? Like... As soon as they're finished and there's no more space, do you keep all of them? Oh yes. Oh wow, that's so cool. And yeah. like, what's the, like, what's the earliest one you have? Like the first one, like around the, like the, the year. Well, sorry, what did you? Like, what, well, what was the first one you did? Like, what year was the first one that you have? Like one of your creative journals. Oh, that must have been some 15 years ago or something. Wow, the first, uh, that's amazing. Yeah. That takes a lot of discipline. Good job. I I'm love not that. writing it every day. It's just when I when you get the when I have inspiration, some, uh, yeah. Inspiration on ideas I want to write down or to to paint or yeah. sketch. Oh well. And going back to your creative process, are you an artist that um, when you're creating, do you like to hear people's input while you're creating, or do you prefer like once you're finished with the painting to hear like constructive criticism, whether it's good or bad? Well, I work in a space where we are many artists, so mm -hmm. we do comment each other's works, but uh, of course when you're in the middle of something and you know this is not what it's going to be, then criticism is not very useful because uh, you, yeah, it's going to be something else. Yeah. So we'll have to wait for the criticism till yeah. well till you feel uh, now I don't know what more to do. Oh well, that's Have very I nice. I reached a level where <laughs> I need some advice. I like that. I like that. And I noticed that all the paintings hanging in your studio they're not framed. Is that because you're going to roll them up and take them back home with you? Yes, it is. Very smart. Because, very smart. Because uh, I like to paint them on frames. Yeah. So you see, some of them have frames, but uh, when I'm here, I have to take the canvases off the frames. Mm -hmm. And so then put in a new one. And you said you like to paint them on frames, or you yes, prefer like the one on frames? Because the um, the canvas gets a little curly and oh, I understand. Yeah, I need to have it stretched. Oh, I like that. That's very you cool. You see, I paint flat. Mm -hmm. Oh, that was actually going to be my next question. Yeah. When you're painting, are you standing up? Are you sitting down? Or are you painting the paintings on the floor? Uh, mostly, I paint them on a table, on a big table. Uh -huh. Uh, because I have to paint them flat because I use a lot of water oh. and then it's flowing uh, over and if I have them up on the wall they, it will be just pouring down and I cannot control what happens oh wow that's an amazing technique I didn't know mm -hmm. Wow. So, um, but right now this is on the floor because the stretching bars were so bad so uh, it bends all the in all directions. Oh, I so see. I some stones on top <laughs> yes, of it to, to, hold, to make it to hold the way. Yeah, I understand <laughs> what you mean. And do you have a preference? Like, what's your go-to medium? Do you prefer like oil, acrylic? I use acrylic. Acrylic. Okay. Mm. Very nice. I see a lot of people. Is that because it's much easier, as you said, to use with the water to get like all the dimensions that you like and textures? Uh, well, it's easier to work with because of uh, there are no toxic. Yeah, uh, and it dries much faster. And it dries much faster. Yeah. So, well, when I started at art school, that what we ha that's what we all had to do mm -hmm. because they didn't have any good. Uh, oh yeah. Uh, what do you call it? Air conditioning or what do you call it when you yeah, get the air to be shifted out. Um, I'm not sure. What do you mean? Sorry. Well, no, we had to. We couldn't oh, okay. uh, use the oil there, so oh, that's okay. why I started with it, and I have just continued you love because it, yeah. I like it. Yeah, I'm a big. I, pre I prefer acrylic too, much more than much more. It's more free. You know, you have more freedom. You're not like because oil it's, has so many rules that you have to follow. Yeah, but I like the um, gloss you get from the the oil. So the oil, I'll yeah. Actually, put on some gloss on some of these uh, paintings. I borrowed some gloss from one of the artist here at oh, wow. Anna to just try it out. And oh, then that's it looks so sweet. a little more like oil when you have yeah. this glass on. And do you like being able to like be in this residency program as Caf Amena where you can like kinda like talk to other people and have like that creative community? Are you a big fan of that? Yes, I really like that. Mm -hmm. um, that's one of the important things 
well, I'm here to get the inspiration yeah. from other artists to, to see what they are doing and to hear about their process mm -hmm. and maybe get some feedback on what I am doing. Oh, I love that. I love that. And do you find yourself, like, sometimes when you're painting, like, when you're painting, are you painting in the quiet? Are you listening to music? Like, are you, do you have the TV on? What's that, like, process like for you? Well, I actually, I like having some music. Mm -hmm. That's here where we are many people in the same room. Uh, we <laughs> can't do that. Uh -huh, so yeah. I miss that because yeah. in my studio at home, I always have music. Yeah. And what, like, what kind of genre do you like of music? Like, jazz, rock? Yes, uh, some jazz, some jazz. Like calm jazz. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, me too. I love <laughs> jazz. And do you, um, do you sometimes feel like, depending on the music, and not just your mood, but like the music you're listening to, that can like influence the outcome of your of your painting? Yes, it can actually. Yeah. yeah so I have to have some music that suits to what I'm doing. Mm -hmm. Oh, I like that. Um, and like, what's the next step for you? Where do you see yourself after this residency program at Mana Contemporary? Well, I'm going back to Norway, obviously, where yeah. I live. And uh, well, I, I hope I can paint my whole life. It's yeah. I really love painting. And uh, I'll have a solo show at my gallery oh, in wow. December, so then I'll probably show a lot of these paintings I've made here. Oh, that's amazing. Uh, um, do you mind telling us your Instagram just so people can like look at the work? Because work, cause I get a lot of like uh, questions about the podcast where I normally wait till the very end to talk about the Instagram and the socials, but now people have been saying, you know, save the socials first so we can like look at the artwork while we're listening yeah. to the podcast. So do you mind sharing with us your Instagram handle? It's uh, Heidi Yard Kirkeby. Okay. Do you mind spelling that for us? Because <laughs> it's a little complicated. Yes, it's uh, H E I D I F J A H R. Perfect. K I R K A B Y. Perfect. It's a long. <laughs> no, no, but that's good. It makes you stand out. Um, and do you mind sharing your website as well, please? Yes, that's uh, Heidi Kirkeby. Dot N O. Dot Okay, perfect. Um, and and there you, you can find my Instagram as well. Perfect. Yeah, that might be a little easier, right? <laughs> and um, are you open to any commissions? Because I had a few um, previous artists. Once the podcast went live, other people were like reaching out to me to ask them. So I kind of like to put the info of the artist so they can directly reach out to you. Are you open to commissions? Like somebody at like you know wants to message you and they want like a special painting for their loved one for special like holiday or season are you open as a commission oh, yes i could be open <laughs> for that yes, yes that always would be nice. it's <laughs> always good right <laughs> and then how early um in your career like in your life did you know you wanted to be an artist well actually i've always wanted to be an artist but uh, i studied economies mm -hmm. no oh so wow i have a master in economy it that's was amazing when i was an adult i yeah. started to study art mm -hmm. so uh, and did you always find yourself like as a kid like always drawing yeah. or like being interested in the arts and did, did it ever like click with you because for me it didn't like i never thought oh you know, there's only like one Picasso and that's it. Like this is once in a lifetime person. Did you ever think like, hmm, this is like something I would like to be full time, but I don't know how that works. Or did you think, no, I have to get a real job. And if I'm lucky, I can do like art as a hobby. Yes, it was kind of the last one because it's very difficult to live from being an artist. Mm -hmm. So as an economist, it, it was, of course, a very bad decision to become <laughs> an artist. <laughs> but... Uh, I am lucky to be able to do this mm -hmm. now. Absolutely, and I'm glad you are because your work is beautiful. And do you find being from Norway has being from that like the country you were born in impacted your work? Do you like find pieces of your culture in your paintings? Well, I suppose um, nature is a very important thing mm -hmm. in Norway. We are uh, it's a big country and we have few people. Yeah. And, uh, we tend to, most Norwegians tend to use a lot of time out in the nature to, mm -hmm. go, uh, to, to be active in nature, to go mm -hmm. hiking, skiing, bicycling. Oh, wow. So that was like something you just grew up in, like going to nature, being in yeah. nature. So I always oh, wow. found calm and, uh, and, 
and joy in being in nature. So that's mm-hmm. probably why you can see that. Yeah, in absolutely. As well. And what kind of nature do you like? Like, do you like just like walking in the forest, hiking, or like something crazy like kayaking or mountain climbing? Like, what? Like, what does nature mean to you? I like all kinds. All of kinds nature. of nature. I do so. Both the mountains and the sea and the mm-hmm. forest and oh, wow. the meadows. I like it all. Yeah, that's beautiful. I love that. And then the, how many paintings have you created since you've been in this residency? Because it seems well, like... I think I made 14 big 14? ones. 14? Oh, wow. And then some four, four, four or five smaller sketches. Oh, wow. That is so, so cool. It's been a lot. <laughs> yes, congratulations. You're very disciplined. I love it. And I like how... It almost seems like all the paint. We're in her studio right now, and I'm looking at her artwork. And it kind of seems like all of the paintings here are separate in their own, but they're almost like part of a family. Do you know what I mean? Like mm-hmm. it's almost like they're related in a way, but they're so different in their each uniqueness. And I really love that. I think I have to pick some one for some of them for the rece- the reception. It's too oh, crowded okay. here now because they are hanging too close to each other. Mm-hmm. But now I'm working on them, so they. Mm-hmm. No, yeah, I see what you mean. Just need to be surrounded by them to see what more to do. Yeah. During the process. So, are you finished with the current paintings that you have in your studio right now, or will you be adding anything to it, or it's already? Um, no, most of them I think are finished, but finished. I might add some things. Okay. To some of them. No, because I was gonna say they look so beautiful. Thank you. They look really beautiful. That's amazing. So, how long has this residency been? Because I know it's like a summer residency. It's different from other ones. Yes, it's only for July, so it's one month. Oh wow! So and you did that many paintings in one month. Congratulations! Well, wow. it's actually been only three weeks now. Three weeks. This, this week is the last. Oh my gosh, that's amazing! That not only you created fourteen pieces, large pieces of art, smaller ones, and also as you said you you had the chance to like go in the art scene. Yes, and we've w- been very active. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I need to know what kind of coffee you're drinking because I want the <laughs> <Yeah>. same one, please. <laughs> or maybe it's a lot of Red Bulls. Um, and how do you see like the art scene in Europe versus like in America? Do you see like any difference? Well, yes. I, I see that the prices are <laughs> much higher here yeah. in uh, the States than at mm-hmm. home. And, uh, well... You know, New York is kind of the capital of art in the world, so you can, th- there, there's so much to see. Yeah. It's so big. There's yeah. so many talented artists to yeah. see. And when you're like in museums or art galleries, are you like observing, like how do you take art? Like how do you see other people art, artwork? Do you just like quickly look at it? Like do you want to know everything about it? Do you try to see like where, where they started painting, where they finished it? Or are you just like, like how do you, get inspired by other artists well i when i see something i like i can study it mm-hmm. and study the brush strokes the compositions mm-hmm. the colors make it taking some close-up photos to see what they have been doing but i'm when i see something i'm not interested i mm-hmm. could you just go like <laughs> quickly by and <laughs> choose the ones i i love I really that. like and do you have like a favorite artist like when people ask you like you're like oh this artist or do you have a few artists? Yeah, well, maybe right now it's Helen Frankenthal. Mm-hmm, as you previously uh, mentioned, yeah. Who I'm uh, studying right now. Mm-hmm. But as a Norwegian, I, of course, love Edvard Munch. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and do you also find inspiration in other fields of art, like music, fashion, or is your inspiration like mainly in the art world? Well, mainly in the art world, but I also do some sculpturing. Okay. Fabulous. And going back to when you're in the creative process, like in your studio, you mentioned you listen to jazz. Do you mind sharing with us like who your favorite albums or singers are that you're always listening to? Uh, there are so many. I'd so many. It's difficult to, <laughs> no, to pick No, no, it's someone, okay. Yeah. It's okay. Um, do you want to tell me a little bit more about your work, like the description and more info? Well, uh, these uh, nature abstractions, they, uh, as I told you, they... Uh, they express um, atmospheres, and mm-hmm. these atmospheres can also be interpreted as personal moods. Mm-hmm. So I, I love hope that. that's something people can feel when they see the yeah. paintings. No, absolutely. And just now that I'm here in your studio, um, once you're in nature, like, do you see 
your paintings like like when you get inspired while you're in the moment do you see your paintings like finish right there and then or as you mentioned it's just kind of like a journey that once you start you don't know where it's going to take you it's a journey. It's a journey. I, I live with my paintings on the wall for quite a long time, mm -hmm. and they can maybe be hanging there for a month, and then I suddenly see I have to change these colors and oh, this uh, composition. And yeah. Well, and they're, they're kind of maturing. Yeah. <laughs> no, I love that. And did you ever paint something that you didn't understand at the moment, but then maybe like weeks or months went by, you like reflected back, and you're like, oh my gosh. What I was going through in my life makes so much sense in this painting. Did that ever happen to you? Uh, yes, I, that can happen, and I also feel I get influenced by the seasons. Uh -huh. You know, when it's spring, uh, it tends to be lighter colors. Lighter, and yeah, yeah. Uh, winter, it tends to get darker. Darker, colors, yeah. Even if I don't really think that much about it, it just happens. And do you have a favorite season? I like them all. You like them all? Yeah. Do you ever notice, like, which season you're able to like create the most or have like the most amount of work done or well that's probably the winter time because winter. then i have most time yeah to do the the paintings yeah and there's not much to do so why not just create art right yeah so yeah. it's cold outside and you perfect have perfect. time to be inside to do the work yeah. love that well thank you so much Heidi for being on the podcast thank you for having me I know you have a reception Thursday I know you're super busy so I really do appreciate you taking the time to meet with me and I'm very grateful um, yeah we we'll definitely say follow follow Heidi we share do you want to share again your your Instagram and your we'll just share your website whatever you're comfortable with in case people uh, want to double check yeah, so I think the easiest would go, be to go to my uh, website, website heidikirkeby.no. No, perfect. Thank you so much again, Heidi. It's been a pleasure. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for listening to Tariq Talk. Follow Tariq Talk on all social media channels and check out the video interviews online. is Tariq Talk. Your host, Tariq Mendez, takes you on a journey with guests from all around the world. Broadcasting around the world. Around the world. This is Tariq Talk. Hello, guys. Today, I'm in Mana Contemporary at the ASCAF Residency Program with June Sira. How are Hi. you, June? I'm fine, thank you. Thank you so much for being here. Um, I have to say you have a very good speaking voice. I'm sure the listeners will love your voice. is very relaxed. And really? Very tranquil. <laughs> um, I'm first surrounded by her beautiful artwork. Um, if thank you guys want to come check it out Thursday, the reception is Thursday. It's a must-see. Um, do you want to start off by telling us a little, a little bit about yourself? Um, yes. Um, um, I'm an artist from Norway. Mm -hmm. I paint figurative. I paint with tempera. Mm -hmm. um, which is an old recipe with egg and oil and water. Oh, wow. Uh, and it's, uh, you have to use it quickly because it dries. So you have to put one color at a time. Yeah. Or the other pa pa colors do dry. So it's, um, it's not the same as using oil and you can just put on top and on wow. top. Or have a lot of colors on your pa and that's so cool so, uh, I, I, did, I, I had no idea I was actually going to ask you because it's so colorful and so many yeah, textures it's like, but um, you can't really tell wow yes when you when you the, when you paint with tempera the sort of the um, oil and um, egg goes in yeah. and the pigment stays on top yeah so you have to have a, a certain ground you can't use any ground oh, wow. primer. I yeah. Mean, yes, primer. Because you need a special primer that wow. I make <laughs> to to make the uh, pigment stay on top. Stay on top. And that's really like the lightning. So, oh, wow. Yeah. And how long ago did you start this, this medium? Like, is this something uh, that you started? No, I started with oil. And with then, oil. Um, like all artists, after some years, you, you can't. Yeah. Yes, because... <laughs> headaches every day oh my god yeah yeah because of the turpentine because i loved use, using turpentine yeah, of course. <laughs> yeah so you have to stop you have to figure another way mm -hmm. and uh, tempera was yeah 
Yeah. And I love tempera now. Oh. <laughs> oh, I love it. <laughs> or oh, like it has that. really good qualities, but um, yeah, yeah, yeah. So. And what's your creative process like? Um, I usually just start on the painting. I oh, wow, decide okay. the same day or um, yeah. the night before. Uh, I seldom make sketches. Mm -hmm. um, sometimes I just draw what um, what I. Uh, memory but usually I last years I've drawn with from photos mm -hmm. oh, wow. so um, yes yeah, so I just go through photos and I find something I like and I just started painting it oh wow, so that's amazing yes and then how soon until you get an idea in your mind that it goes from an idea to a painting for you is that like right away or right away yes, oh wow like right away yes, oh wow it's like yeah <laughs> The same day. Yeah, or that's amazing. The before and I start wow. the day after. So and do you normally like? Do you kind of like sketch a painting before, or you just go onto the no, painting? No, I sketch. I sketch. sketch? Usually okay. sketch. Before I didn't sketch when mm -hmm. I used oil, but now I with tempera I sketch because yeah. the when you put tempera on, the best you just have to do it in one go. Mm -hmm. If you put another color on top, it sort of kills the the pigment. Yeah. The, yeah, the pigment that oh, goes wow. on top. So you have to. Just do it in one go, so that's why I sketch now. <laughs> that's amazing. Yes. And and do you find yourself like um, in your everyday life? Do you like how do you keep track of your ideas? Do you write them down? Do you just like let them stay in your mind? Uh, sometimes um, they just when I see I see movies mm -hmm. and I get. I get a lot of pictures that I would like to yeah. make. Yeah. Oh, so while you're watching, you're yeah, taking pictures. Oh, I love that. I watch yeah. the movies. Yeah. So I sort of have to, sort of. Yes, I have to remember that. And sometimes I go back and take a photo. Sometimes I just stop the film and take a photo right away. Oh, I love that. That so was actually going to be a question. Does your brain ever relax? Like, are you an artist that you can enjoy like real life and when you're not in the studio, or are you always inspired? Are you always like looking for beauty to bring onto your paintings? Yes, you are always. But when I do relax, it's actually when I watch television. Yeah. <laughs> Even though I see things I like that as mm -hmm. well, so maybe I don't relax, but that's when I feel I relax. Mm -hmm. so. And who, like, what are you inspired by? Just like TV, music, art, fashion? Life, yes. Life Everything. And, and <laughs> day, yes. Um, of course, going to galleries, seeing mm -hmm. the big artists. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, that's yeah. that's really when I need something. You just yeah. go to a museum. And, and when you go to galleries, are you able to relax, or are you like looking at all the colors, thinking like, "Oh, how did you do that?" You know what I mean? Yeah, I, I go go close up. Yeah, yes. oh, I love that. I love <laughs> so that. So sometimes sort of like, no, no, you're too close. Yeah. And <laughs> you during know? your residency program here at Cafe Mena Contemporary, have you been able to like step away from the studio, go look at art, or? Have you just been like creating nonstop? No, we have been going to see arts. We are oh, going cool. to galleries and museums, and we've been visiting a lot of artists here. Oh, nice. And yeah, that's been very nice. Yeah. There are some great artists here. Yes. Yeah. And you mentioned you're from Norway, yes. right? Do you, do you live in Norway currently? Yes, yeah? I do. And then do you have a studio space there with other uh, artists around, or no, just you? No, that's what's so different. I work alone. Go mm -hmm. to my studio, see no one. Oh, wow. I <laughs> Me often, too. Of, yeah. <laughs> often forget to eat. Yeah. Uh, and just work till I sort of, now I have to go home and yeah, eat. Yeah, <laughs> until you're so tired about to pass out, right? <laughs> yeah, and I, yeah. So, uh, and I love hearing, I always listen to music when I work. Mm -hmm. So this is very diff different yeah. from what I'm used to, but it's been nice mm -hmm. to to be with others and mm -hmm. uh, yes get inputs yeah yeah because i'm not used to that <laughs> yeah that, that was actually going to be my next question do you are you an artist that while you're creating do you like to hear feedback or do you prefer to finish a painting and then like hear what people have to say no i would like feedbacks but uh, you like, not many oh. see them so oh. <laughs> <laughs> so you'd like the feedback while you're creating or afterwards yes, I would like that as oh well. wow um, that's very yeah. amazing a lot of pe a lot of like people artists like, interview, they're like okay, don't no, come no, near no, me I would, I would love that because I was told when I went to Chelsea School of Art that um, that someone should stand beside me and take my paintings away. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! So I didn't overdo them. Yeah. Because 
sometimes you overdo it. Yeah, it's very hard so, to like yeah. less is more. Yeah. That's what I think the trick so is to learn. You have to learn to go home when you're tired or you're just going to ruin it. Mm -hmm. so. And you mentioned listening to music while you create. Do you have like a favorite artist or genre of music? Because I don't have time to sort of change anything. Mm -hmm. or I, I haven't made a... Or you just keep it playing? I just... I just listen to the radio, really. Oh, wow, that's amazing. <laughs> and so do you find, like, the music that you're listening to the radio, like, it impacts your work? No. No? No, it just something makes me relax. Gives you, like, an energy yeah. boost, like a coffee, yeah. right? Yeah. So um, you mentioned you're very quick t from the idea to go from your head to the canvas. When mm -hmm. you first go in your studio, do you need, like, a few minutes to, like, to have a coffee, think about what you're doing, or, like, as soon as you come in, you're ready to go? I'm ready to go. Oh, wow, that's <laughs> amazing. <laughs> yeah, so, yeah. Wow. And do you normally like to work in the daytime or nighttime? Like, do you have a preference no, or I whenever I inspiration? I, I prefer to work, work in the daytime. In the yes, daytime? Because I don't like, uh, I always use the light. The mm. Because Tempra needs daylight. Yeah. So I never use uh, these lamps. Yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah. And do you, like, and when you're... Let's say, like, when you're stuck for inspiration and you're not having any good ideas for paintings, what do you do for yourself that you're like you're able to bounce back? Um, like, do you go in nature? Do you go to like museums and galleries? Yes, both. Both. I, I love to go in, in the nature. Mm -hmm. That's really relaxing. Oh wow! So, and uh, it's relaxing to go into galleries, and museums. Yeah. Because I don't look at everything like mm -hmm. some do they go from one picture to the other i go through and i stop and i can stay a while if that painting yeah. says something to me oh wow. so, uh, yeah. have you ever like when you create your paintings do you ever create something that you don't like like are you the type yes. to throw it out or do you repaint it or do you just leave it to the like side <laughs> for a few weeks it's like the painting i have an idea and the painting has another idea. Mm -hmm. It just is that way. And then I just have to go with the painting. Mm -hmm. But then I know I have to make another one. Okay. To try and make the yeah, yeah. first thing, first idea. And that's why I often end up with three or four, the same mm -hmm. motive. Oh, wow. Painted very differently. Mm -hmm. So. Something. And this, this residency program was, I believe, a month, the month of July, right? Yes. Were you able to create a lot, like, of art or go deep in your work? Like, what has been your experience here? Going big, mm -hmm. because my space is not that big. Oh, okay. So that's why I have only yeah, three I love, paintings, yeah, and they are big. quite big. Yeah. <laughs> and so this would be very big in my studio. Mm -hmm. So that's what's been... Oh, that's been really nice mm -hmm. to have a big space. No, they're lovely. And what are, like, who are your inspirations? Like, who do you look up to? Or do you have, like, any other artists? It could be, like, music or art artists. Yeah, of course, Munch. Edward oh, Munch, okay, of yeah, course. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and, oh, Goga, there are so many. Van Gogh, um, and, um, oh, it's completely still. Um... Oh, the one I like so much, American. Yeah. Who do you think I look like? Who do who would do you, you s would you recognize him in my work? Um, who I like? <laughs> that's a tough question. <laughs> I'm suffering from jet lag, and I just woke up a few not like two I'm hours ago. Now. <laughs> mm, no. It's very it's very difficult because I would say there's so many different elements. Mm. You know, the colors are so vibrant, and the texture, and the way you use shading and shadow is like. Mm. perfection yeah. so yeah I would say that's a, that's a little difficult for me because I think your, your work is very and unique I'm really really blank <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah no yeah. I don't know I wouldn't I don't know it's just to me it's just so unique I wouldn't be able to compare it to anybody what do yeah. you think what? like when you see your work like yeah. do you see pieces from different artists or Yes, I probably yeah. see pieces from different artists. Yeah. Is yes. each painting, as you mentioned, like a photograph that you that you have before? It's and a photograph I usually have taken, oh, wow. yes. So That's amazing. Usually they are what I, my photographs. Yeah. Yes, my and do you ever paint yourself? No, I only done it once, I think. Yeah. Do you like to or no? No, I don't like no? to. No, <laughs> why not? <laughs> because... Uh, it's easier to paint others, mm -hmm. and even though I paint others, 
I see myself in them. Yeah. So uh, I paint myself in every painting. Yeah. No, I understand what you mean. So I'm, I'm like that yeah. too. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I love painting people, but painting myself, I start to think too much. Not, you yeah. know, it's like <laughs> so fluid when you paint other people. It's so easy. It's yes. like energy, you know. Yeah. Um, and then I see there's like so much like daylight space um you mentioned you previously i'm guessing norway you guys have like a restriction on daylight like it gets darker S especially in the winter especially in the it gets, winter uh, dark at four yeah oh wow yeah <laughs> that's crazy so do five you find maybe, yeah, five four, wow no, do you find yourself like creating more or less on depending the season like uh, artwork wise no, I think it's uh, I think it's um, the same. The same. Or in the spring, of mm -hmm. course, spring you have long hours. Yes, so yes. When the spring comes and the summer, so yeah. Do you think that that spring. changes your mood and your ideas and yes, inspiration? So. Yeah. Yes. Do you think for the good or for the bad or a little bit of both? I think for the good. For the good. Mm -hmm. And like, what's your next step after this residency program? Like, where, where like, do you have any plans coming up? Uh, I have a separate exhibition. In Oslo okay. next year at Gallery Rangfur. Oh wow! Okay. And um, I'm going to be a part of an exhibition she has in the U.S. Mm -hmm. this autumn. I think it was in September. With oh wow! Okay. Eight, seven, eight portraits. Wow! So that's fabulous. Yeah. Okay, June. Do you want to share with us your Instagram, please? Uh, it's. Uh, June.sira. Yes, yeah, so at June.sira. So go at please follow her. Fabulous artist, fabulous person. Um, and also, I wanted to ask um, do you plan, like, do you see yourself trying different mediums for the future? I, I also paint with um, rabbit skin glue. And what is pigments. that? Wow, that sounds so exotic. And what is water. that? It's so, and then you don't need the ground, the primer. Oh, wow. You just directly onto the canvas yeah so i do that as well that's that looks a bit li like watercolor i can imagine that's so yes. fascinating so i do that as well oh well wow. and, and do you sorry go ahead often draw i often, you often draw, draw a lot oh, and wow. use a little bit of rabbit skin glue on oh, that that's so drawing. cool so and do you keep all of your work like you have like an archive of all the work you created or pictures of it I have an archive of everything I've sold to people. Oh, well, that's so amazing. So I sort of have all the yeah, that's names. Good too. That's good. Do you ever and go back to like your old work if you're like stuck on a painting and you try to reference like a little piece of this, a little piece of that? Yes, and I combine do that it. Yes. Yeah. Yes. And uh, I was told when I made art, and then especially print, printmaking, because mm. that's what I, what I what I started with, and. Um, that he, my professor said, always keep the best one for yourself. Oh, wow, that's for amazing. Yes. I love that. <laughs> so I have all of my. That's so genius. Yes. So I love that. Yeah. I love that. And growing up, like, did you always feel you wanted to be an artist? I didn't think about it, but yeah. I loved drawing. So yeah. I, I was always drawing. Oh, wow. But um, when it came to the point that, what should I do now? Yeah. You know, after school, I. I thought, no, I just want to draw. That's so amazing. That's what I did. Yeah, because I feel time. a lot of people I interview, they don't like they, they dream and their ambition is to be an artist, but they don't mm -hmm. really know how to do that until nah. they get older. And one question I always get from young artists that they s like sent to me to ask future guests is, mm -hmm. what's an advice do you have for like a young artist that they know they want to be an artist, they feel it in their bones, but they don't know the s like the next step to do? Like, do you have any suggestions? <laughs> No, you just have to do it, because uh, you won't be happy if you don't. Yeah. So, yeah. That's true. Just do it. And another question that I get asked a lot, when somebody um, gets like a creative block where they can't come with any, like they don't get any inspirations, any new ideas, what's something that worked for you in the past when you're kind of stuck and you're not able to like, you're not creating work that you love, like have, were you able to like surf, like surpass that in any way like would you have any advice to give to people that i don't know if it's in english that's how you say it, like create a block i forget yeah. sorry english is my second language you know like when you don't have any good ideas for yeah. like a month or two mm. what's an advice that you would tell people to like is I it like take a break you take a break yeah and like do you take a, a break completely break, for art or just take a break go to a museum oh okay. and it'll come okay sort of so just trust the process, yes. basically. Yes. I like. Uh, June, do you think being from your country has impacted your work today? Like, do you see 
like any parts of your work having something to do with your culture and your background? Uh, of course, uh, it has to do with my background because mm -hmm. it's me. It's mm -hmm. uh, everything I've experienced, and the culture is people. Mm -hmm. Culture is in everyone. I think yeah. so. It's um, natural that it shows. Yeah. And do you find like do you think that gets traf transferred to your art? Um, yes, I really think they do. Mm -hmm, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I like that. And have you ever done any collaborations with other artists when it comes to art? No. No. Is that something you like? You'd be interested in to do, or I don't know. Maybe further down. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> Who knows, right? That's the beauty of art. Yeah. You never know. Um, all right, June. Thank you so much for having me here. I know it's you have the Thursday reception and today's Monday. And I really appreciate you for taking the time. I know you're very busy. Yeah, it's very um, nice. Everybody, please come to the Thursday reception and check out June. Once again, it's at June.Sira Instagram. Beautiful work. Um, thank you. Yeah, thank you so much for being with us today. And thank I'm so you. excited people get to hear about your background, your work, and they get to see your artwork on Instagram as well. Mm -hmm. Thank you Great. so much for being here. Thank, thank you. Bye-bye. So <laughs> thank you for listening to Tariq Talk. Follow Tariq Talk on all social media channels and check out the video interviews online. is Tariq Talk. Your host, Tariq Mendez, takes you on a journey with guests from all around the world. Broadcasting around the world. Around the world. This is Tariq Talk. All right, guys, today we are here with Louise Dininer at the Mena Contemporary. She's a member of the SCAF residency. Yes. Did I pronounce that correctly? Yes. Yeah? Okay, cool. Um, thank you so much for being here, Louise. How are you today? Thank you. I'm doing good. And I have to say, you have such a beautiful voice, such a soothing voice. So I'm sure the, like, the listeners will love to hear you talk. Thank so, you very much. Of course. Um, do you want to start by telling us a little bit about yourself? Well, hi, I, I am Louise Dininger. And I'm an artist, a conceptual artist in a contemporary way. And my work is interdisciplinary, multidisciplinary, which means that I use different mediums to, to do my work, such as painting, sculpting, collages, performances, film. Oh, wow. And I also use the material of dung in my artwork. Oh, wow. Yes. Yeah, so as a conceptual artist, I'm very much interested in my audience as in the human mm -hmm. and their relationship to everything else. So consciousness is one of the topics that I cover. So it ranges from mundane to really deep work. Yeah. Consciousness, spiritual science, metaphysics, quantum theory, wow. identity, gender, or feminist. The, the, the topics range mm -hmm. from consciousness to spiritual science to metaphysics to self-leadership, self-development, wow. identity, queer, feminist, and, you know, all that kind of uh, genders. So, yeah, it varies from what I'm inspired to, to produce. Oh, wow, that's amazing. I got to ask you, what energy drink or coffee are you drinking to be able to do all of this? You must be like working 24 hours, it seems, though. Well, it's not as complicated as it sounds. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm, I'm in the flow. It just okay. goes with the flow. So it depends. Sometimes the projects are small yeah. and sometimes they're big. However, I'm constantly in a creative process, so gotcha. to speak. Gotcha. Yes. That's beautiful. Thank and you. I actually wanted to ask about creative process. What's your creative process like? Like when you go to the studio, um, do you get to work right away? Do you kind of relax, have like a coffee, you know, chill out a little bit, then get to work? Well, do you work in the daytime, nighttime? What's your preference? Uh, that's a very good question. Actually, I disciplined myself way back when I was doing my MFA at mm -hmm. the Academy of Fine Arts University in Vienna, Austria, where I live. I also live in northern Uganda. Well, I disciplined myself to, like, when I get to the studio, the first thing I do, 
change into my studio clothes and start working immediately. Wow. That's the first thing I do when I get to my studio. So usually I get to my studio around about 10, 9, 10 o'clock in the morning and I produce until maybe 5, 6. It depends on how inspired I am. Sometimes it can go a bit longer. Oh, wow. So. So I have a routine, you mm -hmm. know, Monday to Friday, I'm in my studio. Unless I'm working on another project, then the weekends will be squeezed in. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so, yeah, that's my routine, basically. That's beautiful. And how do you handle, like, if you go to the, w to the studio and you start to create, but you're not really getting out what you had in mind? Like, do you normally stop for the day or do you push yourself? Like, how do you balance that? Well, the thing is, I have again disciplined myself to always be working on a project mm -hmm. it can be something very small like a painting or a sculpture or an, or an object that i'm working on so usually there's something that I, I i have to create in my studio and it's an ongoing process so i start a painting and then i'll finish it or you know continuously working on it i work in series so i'll be working on series so basically when i'm in my studio there is stuff to be done i never really get into a situation whereby oh i'm not inspired to do something so no 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 it doesn't happen and yeah. then also i wanted to ask about ideas where do ideas come for you like do you have to be motion like driving traveling or do you have to be still like how does inspiration come to you well, being a conceptual artist, my work is research-based, okay. which means that I'm constantly researching and also experiential mm -hmm. in the sense that, you know, I am an embodiment of what I'm producing. So I'm basically constantly inspired be it, you know, when I'm coming out of the train and going to my studio or you know, I, I find something online, there's always God, the archive in my yeah. brain is just so full of material. Oh, wow. So, I'm inspired all, all the, the time. time. Oh, yes, wow. yes. Are yes. you able to relax and like, or is your like brain always thinking, always inspired? Well, again, as I said, with experiential knowledge mm -hmm. and the spiritual science that I depict in my work, it is also a practice. Okay. So I, I do my meditation, oh, wow. concentrate, deep concentration, mm -hmm. prayer, and meditation every morning. I've been doing that for the last 25 years. Oh, wow. Yes. That's why you have amazing energy. <laughs> I was about to say, like... Thank meditation you. changed my life and i just like recently started getting back to it with discipline mm -hmm. but like you have amazing energy you're like you're so peaceful and you know thank just you. tranquility so it's a pleasure talking to you thank you thank but you yeah. yeah so i've got a morning routine i do my meditation just to empty everything and to connect yes and, and then start my day perfect beautiful and before this residency did you always like when you're creating in your space do you enjoy having like people around you or do you find that distracting Oh, that's a very good question. After I finished my MFA, I was fortunate enough to be involved in a project in Vienna. Mm -hmm. And it's a um, museum, florist of Museum of Young Contemporary Art. And it is also a, a studio, it has studio spaces. So it's a museum with studio spaces. Mm -hmm. So I've always worked in a collective which I think is inspiring for me as an artist because then I've got my colleagues who are always there. We work on projects together. We speak to our works and influence each other and support each other, you know, where possible because it's things that you can do. Yeah. There's certain things that you're able to do and I'm not able to do. So supporting each other in that way. And yeah, it doesn't bother me to have people around me. Yes. Oh, that's, that's part beautiful. of the process. Um, I just previously, before you, I interviewed Jay, and he had the most beautiful things to say about you. Thank and you. And then we were talking about the same thing, you know, having people to talk to and collaborate, like, you know, mentally with ideas. And he said you guys were, uh, you guys really enjoy that, doing that together. Absolutely. Yeah. Yes. Jay is amazing. Oh, okay. yes, yes. Shout yes. out to Jay. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and, do, and do you think um, having, like, such a 
beautiful cultural diverse background like you have do you think that influences your work absolutely yeah absolutely i'm very happy and grateful Mm -hmm. that i was born in the family that i was born in uh, that i was born in the country that i was born in i was born in uganda Mm -hmm. raised in kenya and grew up in in the uk now i live in Austria, between Austria and Northern Uganda. Mm -hmm. And I've also lived in other countries as well, such as Italy, you know, short breaks in, um, in Amsterdam, Amsterdam, in Holland. Oh, yeah. That's the word. Yes. So all these experiences I bring with me Mm -hmm. and that finds itself into the works. Yes, yeah, so it's it's um, it's amazing. It's a gift yeah. to be able to to be that person who you know interacts with so many, sees the world in different perspective. And I travel a lot too, so then you know my perspective is is widened, yeah. and I'm able to bring this into my work. And this also supports the work in the sense that the audience, my audience, usually find a way in which they connect with the work. So it speaks to a wide range of people. Mm -hmm. And that is mainly because of the experience that I bring with me and integrate it into my work. Oh, well, that's beautiful. Hearing you say that, like with your, you know, travelers and all your knowledge and everything, it reminds me, I love Maya Angelou. And my favorite quote that she says is, I come as one, but I stand as 10,000. Yes. Um, It kind of reminds me of that, you know, all your knowledge or your artistic knowledge and talent, you know, coming into one body and having all of that around you. That's beautifully said. Yes. And um, what are you working on at the moment right now? Whoa, another very good (laughs) question. (laughs) I just finished the paintings at Escaf. And the topic was quite amazing. Journey home, Journey home. through the uh, the spirit of the ancestors. Wow. So this was also a work that I invited other people to be involved in, especially women of color, indigenous women. And Jay was an exceptional, oh. was included in this work. Yeah. So what happened in this in this series the um, there was contribution and grandmothers came up quite a bit in the works yes so basically it was um a way in which I also appreciate and give voice to all those who supported me in that project and also you know to to give them this platform whereby you know a lot of people are going to be coming to see this this show and I'm also working with another artist downstairs uh, Dustin he's a he's a photographer so we're doing a collaboration together that's I, I'm gonna finish that this week oh wow that's beautiful then I'm back to Vienna I need vacation after oh, wow. this three months of yeah you know really working Cre- endless hard. creativity yes. right and will you be back in the area after that no, then I'm going to Africa. Okay. And then I'll be back in Arizona in end of August. End of August. Yes. However, I have quite a few exhibitions coming up in Vienna, mm. so I'm going to be working on that when oh, I wow, after that's my beautiful. vacation. Yes. That's so cool. Um, so when I originally started this podcast, um, my, my idea was to kind of like interview the same person almost every year or every two years. So I'm, kind of, I'm very much looking forward to like seeing each other in like Thank another you. year or two, yes, maybe in a different here. country or continent and then yes. catching up and seeing like how much you've gone. Yeah. Because I think it's very interesting, not only for the audience, they get to like kind of grow with you, Beautiful. but also they get to hear like a new episode and then go listen to your old episode. But like, wow, look how much, like what she was talking about two years ago. It's like exactly how she planned and you know what I mean? Yes. So I'm very much looking forward um, for the future of thank you hopefully very we much see each other thank, thank you. you so much for being on this podcast it's been a pleasure thank you um, so i get a lot of um written messages from young artists that um always ask me oh can you please ask your future guest this question so a question that a lot of people ask is what would you tell like a young artist that knows in their soul they want to be an artist but they don't know like what's the next step or you know they're not taken seriously by their parents or their family they're you know surrounding is there anything like is there any advice you would tell them that's a very, very good question and an important one. If and when you have a passion for what you do, stick to it. Mm-hmm. 
and remain true to yourself in the sense that, and this I noticed in the art industry or in the art market, that a lot of people tend to follow trends. Yeah. So, yeah, remain authentic yeah. to your voice and continue pursuing your passion and fall in love with what you do and be your first client or your first customer as in love what you do as an artist and then just keep going you never know when that door will open and the door opens according to how much effort and how much work you have put into into your process so it is a journey it needs a lot of patience so don't be impatient just continue doing what you do in the end, the benefits that you will get is really s mind boggling you know however, it needs you to stay to, to, to stay true to yourself and keep going and keep doing what you need to do. Some artists say, "Oh well, I have to hustle on the side. Of course, we all have to pay our bills. we all have to survive you know that doesn't mean that you cannot stay true to what you love doing you know so once you continue to just focusing on your work and doing what you need to do as an artist you will meet success mm -hmm. at a very unexpected hour in my case as well you know my family couldn't understand why i chose to do art you know they would have expected me to maybe be a lawyer yeah or a doctor <laughs> yeah, yeah you know be a lead i am a leader Absolutely. you know so they expected me to, to follow that path. However, my calling was different. So I am able to also change the world through what I do and also earn from what I do. And it's a process. It's a journey. It needs a lot of discipline. It needs a lot of commitment. It needs consistency. It needs belief, especially believing in yourself and your worth and everything else will just follow oh my gosh i have goosebumps that was beautifully said <laughs> i feel you. like you could do anything seriously you could even be like a life coach with what you just said it's so motivational and I'm, i really hope the listeners really take that away if anything from thank today. you i'm trained as a coach as well. <laughs> no way <laughs> yes. oh my god <laughs> There isn't anything that you don't do. It seems I'm telling you, I need to know what coffee and energy I'm a, drink. I'm is. a satisfied leadership coach. Wow, yeah. that's beautiful. Yeah. Wow, I'm so glad we met today. Thank you. Um, and do you mind sharing with us your Instagram and website, please? Yes, uh, Louise Dininger is my Instagram handle, and my website is www.louisedininger.com. Beautiful. And Thank are you, you open to uh, commissions if people reach out to you? Can you like do it through your Instagram or your website? I do have my collectors okay. and from time to time they commission me to do work. Okay. And I have my agent and manager, so perfect. everything is done through my through manager them? and okay, agent. Okay, perfect. So yeah. they can just like reach out to you on Instagram and you can just direct them to the yes. other people. Yes. All right, perfect. It's Thank been a you. pleasure having you here today. Thank, Thank you, you so much, much for taking the time yes. with your beautiful story and it's been Thanks. a pleasure. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you for listening to Tariq Talk. Follow Tariq Talk on all social media channels and check out the video interviews online. This is Tariq Talk. Your host, Tariq Mendez, takes you on a journey with guests from all around the world. Broadcasting around the world. Around the world. This is Tariq Talk. Hey guys, we are here today at the Mana Contemporary and I'm talk, getting a chance, so lucky to get a chance to talk to Padita. Padita, how are you today? I'm good, thank you. Thank you for being here. It's a pleasure to have you here today. Um, Padita is part of the ESCAF residency. Am I getting that right? Yeah, that's right. Yeah? Okay, cool. Um, do you want to start a little bit telling us about yourself? Okay, um, I'm a British artist. Uh, I did a residency of SKF uh, about six years ago and was invited back, but it took a little while to come back because uh -huh. a, a little pandemic got in oh, the way. Oh, okay. Um, but yeah, so I've been here for two months working really hard and 
got 11 paintings done and oh it's been great yeah that's amazing and what's your creative process like oh that's a big like question. when you show up to the studio are you able to get to work right away or do you need to kind of like get a meditation or a coffee going and relax well coffee's definitely Co- welcome <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> it's definitely welcome but no i, I usually know what i want to do of a day yeah um so i'm pretty motivated like that that's so. amazing and do you have a preference of like time of day that you like to work are you like a night owl or do you prefer the mornings well i've got two kids so they've turned me into oh, wow. a morning person where i wasn't <laughs> before i've had no choice so um yeah i find it quite good to get in quite early oh wow two kids you seem so i thought like we were the same age you seem so young that's oh, amazing bless you and do you think um having because this is what i find very fascinating artists that don't have children this is like when i ask them you know what do you see yourself for the future mm-hmm. this is like their main goal is like to have my kids have them hopefully around me painting while i'm painting do you think having children as an artist has like impacted your work or inspired you in a way well both yes and i think uh, it can be a lot tougher on women than men and i think history kind of bears that out really Mm -hmm. um yeah i mean of course it sort of curtails a lot of what you can do and takes time and all the rest of it but having my kids has also been a massive inspiration and it's sort of you have to sort your shit out (laughs) (laughs) do you know what I mean you you have to kind of get your priorities right and figure out what you want to do in life what you want out of it so I mean if anything it's made me more ambitious Mm -hmm. and do you find it like hard balancing like having kids and being an artist like or does that give you like kind of like an endless inspiration because you're kind of able to see the world through their perspective um when i was young when i was younger and when they were you're younger, still young hello <laughs> oh bless you um no when when they were little and uh-huh. i wasn't getting much sleep oh, okay. then yeah that was really 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 tough yeah um not so much now in quite a good sort of routine with it um i get lot of studio time i get to go out and about in london a lot um but i mean i wanted to do this residency obviously because new york is the biggest art mecca in the world it's amazing but also just to have a really fixed concentrated time on my work and uh yeah, so it's been really good doing that. Well, that's amazing. And are you an artist that when you're working, do you enjoy having people around you? Like before this residency, did you like like the output or having people around you? Or do you, like did you find yourself getting distracted? I'm quite good at knuckling down when I need to. <laughs> so sort of drowning stuff out. Um, no, I love interacting with other artists. It's brilliant. Yeah. You know, it, it it's so interesting, like endlessly meeting other artists and chatting about what they do. Um but yeah i mean being an artist you are kind of on your own a lot Mm -hmm. with your head and i'm fine with that you know i can put my headphones on (laughs) (laughs) and you mentioned 11 paintings that's amazing yeah um like can you tell me a little bit about them is it like a series yeah so it's it's sort of following on a bit from work i was doing in the uk where they're sort of strange objecty things floating in the sea um i mean you could say surreal seascapes i don't know but a lot of them are sort of look like they're made of sort of ice cream and tiles from subway or london underground or um yeah they're sort of about a lot of things they're about sort of shifting forms and shifting time and uh, challenging states of matter sort of mm-hmm. quantum physics-y oh wow stuff that's yeah. cool and how does like ideas come to you do you have to be in motion do you have to be still like where do you get your ideas from Ooh. or is it like spontaneous for you well i have to keep my sketchbook near me because okay. you, you don't know really. oh wow okay i mean you can't force ideas yeah or whatever you just have to 
keep sketching in your sketchbook, keep writing things down and sort of see what floats to the surface. Yeah. And if it comes up, then, you know, that's a sign that it needs to be made. Oh, wow, that's very disciplined. So you always keep a sketchbook with you. Like, if you have an idea, you just jot it down? Yeah, I mean, I find that if I don't have the sketchbook near, it's kind of hard to get to sleep because uh-huh. then I will start thinking of oh, wow, ideas okay. and I will start bubbling over. Yeah. But if my sketchbook's there, I can just quickly scribble something down and then it's off my brain. Oh, wow. So. That's very cool because a lot of people, like, for example, I just let my ideas incubate and it drives me crazy. Yeah. But I love when I get to talk to artists that they're so, like, disciplined in their craft that they have the sketchbook. They're able to, like, jot it down right away. So congrats on that. That's really cool. <laughs> <laughs> well, t- yeah, it's quite a good one because otherwise yeah. it would drive me crazy yeah. too. So it's good to have it. I know it's written yeah. down. I know it's drawn so yeah i can reference and i get a lot of these questions from young artists um that they tell me to ask future guests um for in terms of young artists that they you know they feel in their soul they're an artist they want to you know pursue that but they're not sure what to do what's an advice that you would give a young artist like who knows they're an artist but they don't know exactly where to go or what to believe in i think there's kind of two parts to that question there's uh, sort of what the artist will produce and I think you can't force that and you shouldn't force it. Mm-hmm. You should just kind of live your life and see if it comes to you. Yeah. And it, if you want to do something, if you want to produce a certain type of work, then just work really, really hard at it and be prepared for a lot of it not to work out. Yeah. So I think there's that side of it. Um, because you have to kind of ask why you want to be an artist as well. I I think that's a good question to ask yourself. But uh, I suppose the second part to that question is, especially as young artists, um, knowing about the way the art world works and sort of navigating it and finding the bits of it that are good for you can be really tricky. And I mean, there's no simple answer to that, really. Yeah. I think just be interested and sort of go to as many galleries and shows as you can well, just that's amazing out. advice and my favorite question that i like to ask the guests is what's an advice like artistic business advice that you would tell your younger self uh i would i don't know if i'll take my own advice but i'll tell myself to not worry so much about what other people think mm-hmm. and just properly trust my instincts mm-hmm. and go with it well that's beautiful And when you're done with the artwork, do you enjoy hearing, like, the critiques of the artwork? Or do you prefer just to see people from afar enjoying your artwork? I think think it's important to get critique on your artwork Mm -hmm. for many reasons. Um, It needs to be at the right time and at the right point. Yeah. Um, Because sometimes if you're still kind of thinking about an idea or still in the middle of a work and someone criticizes it it can really kind of sway yeah. where you go <laughs> yeah, yeah. um so but when you finish something yeah i mean always whether you buy into what people are saying or not you know it's a gift people giving you that critique is a gift mm-hmm. and you don't have to have it <laughs> you don't have to own it <laughs> <laughs> and you mentioned galleries and going to galleries in new york city is that something that you use for your like creative process like you know look like when you're going to galleries or seeing art are you kind of like just using that moment to relax or are you using that moment to get inspired and get creative ideas um i suppose it depends what's in the gallery really so both of those things and also because i like to know what's going on Mm -hmm. and I, i like to have a feel for different spaces and learn about new artists but you don't know if you're gonna go to a show and it's going to be a bit meditative and sort of serene or um i went to the whitney what was the artist called josh someone sorry my no worries no remember but anyway it it was amazing is it it a current show at the whitney yeah yeah it's he does like uh some there's some ai stuff there's some three three d printing I can't remember the name. I can't remember the name. Yeah. Anyway, it was like massively full on 
and of the time. It was so now. Mm -hmm. It was so kind of dystopian, utopian future in your face. And it was amazing, but it was very overwhelming. (laughs) (laughs) Um, So, yeah, you... I like the surprise of it as well. You you don't know. And if you see something on Instagram, it could look so different in life. No, nothing can replace that, really. Yeah. And do you ever, like, create a create an artwork that you're not sure about, you don't really understand it, but you go with it, but then later on you kind of look back and you're like, oh, my gosh, I was, like, going through something and it reflected on that, but now I understand it and it makes much more sense to me now than it did back then when I finished it. Oh, my it. God, yeah. Yeah? <laughs> so there's a quote, and I forget who said it, but um, someone said, you can't live your life and understand it at the same time. Oh, and wow. um, I scrolled it on my studio <laughs> wall at home. Because <laughs> I just thought, actually. yeah, that's it. Because sometimes... It doesn't make sense and it's a weird feeling because you're kind of, I don't know if it's your subconscious, but you're sort of ahead of yourself in some way and yeah. No, I get what you mean. And who are your influences? Like who are you inspired by? Oh, that's a big question. Uh, Who, who am I really digging right now? Hmm. Fiona Banner, I'm checking out a lot. Mm-hmm. Uh, I really love Katie Patterson. Um, oh, you stumped me. There's too many. No <laughs> There's too many. Just I've at the seen moment. so much amazing art here as well. I mean, I've just yeah. My head's so full at the moment. I need to decompress. Yes. But yeah. And and how do you do like? One thing that I like learning about from other people is like your artistic self-care routine. Like, how do, how are you able to like kind of unplug, you know, and not have your mind constantly think all the time? I don't know. It just happens? Well, not necessarily. But I know at the moment I've been working so hard that I need to unplug when I go yeah. home. And um, so I've got another artist using my studio at home so I can't get in there for a week oh wow which I think is probably a really good thing yeah but that's kind of cool like to go back and see like how they kind of use the space in a way that you never thought of yeah because it happened to me once yeah 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 no it is it is cool and she's a friend of mine and oh that's amazing and and then I'll get my lovely studio back (laughs) (laughs) I've missed it yes but um yeah I think it's good good to have that week just to get my bearings, get over my jet lag, decompress, and just, yeah. Just be still in in a way, right? Yeah, exactly. All right, so do you want to share with us um, any future projects you have coming up? Yeah, sure. So currently I've got painting in the summer show at the Royal Academy um, back in the UK. Oh, wow, congrats. Thank you. And I'm waiting on the John Moore's Painting Prize, which is a big thing in the UK, but I've learned it's not here. (laughs) (laughs) So (laughs) I've been telling people and they've been looking blank, but never mind. Um, And I've got a show coming up, a group show in London, September. September, okay. And then quite a lot of other stuff brewing. That's amazing. And yeah, I'd love, love to come back here and exhibit because it's awesome over here. Congrats. Uh, do you want to, do you mind sharing your Instagram and your website just so we can like follow you and then keep yeah, up with all your sure. cool stuff? Yeah, um, sure. So my Instagram is at Perdita Sinclair. That's P-E-R-D-I-T-A-S-I-N-C-L-A-I-R. Sorry, I always have to spell my no, name. Yes, no, yes, please no do. No one knows yeah. otherwise. It's always best. And um, my website's just paditasinclair.com. Dot com. Perfect. Easy breezy. Yeah. Um, and are you open to commissions? Like if somebody hears this podcast and sees your work and they reach out to you through your Instagram or website? Uh, I'm really happy for anyone to reach out to me. But because of the kind of work I do, it's not really commissionable Mm -hmm. if that's good grammar or not but um yeah they're welcome reach out ask whatever you like but it's not really commission work perfect okay no worries thank you so much for being on the podcast it's been a pleasure i'm so honored to have you here and getting to learn about you and your process thank you so much cheers (laughs) Bye 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 thank you for listening to Tariq talk Follow Tariq Talk on all social media channels and check out the video interviews online.